guys and welcome to another GPU mining video. I'm Alex from TechFusion and today I'm going to show you exactly how you can cool this beast of a card right here which is the RTX 3090. I am going to show you exactly how you can take this GPU from its uh, stock settings so using the three fans on the front and from those uh, excessive temperatures that you are reaching if you are mining on this card and exactly how you can jerry rig something that is quite uh, inexpensive so to say for around 10 or 15 dollars uh, you can actually improve your performance by around 50 percent temperature wise right so i will show you exactly what sort of temperatures i've encountered while mining with this rtx 3090 and uh, well mining at peak efficiency i should say uh, I was running the fans all the way up to 100% and I will show you exactly by adding just a fan to the back of the GPU where the GPU cutout is and uh, just some uh, cheap aluminum heat sinks like the ones that I have here and as well as some thermal pads to get those uh, heat sinks to stick on the back of the back plate which is metal. Um, yeah, we can, uh, we can drop the temperatures quite significantly and as well run uh, the RTX 3090 a lot cooler and uh, with uh, less fan speed overall on the included fans in the GPU. While we install this fan into that board, we are going to uh, open up the fan hub and we are going to run this test for about 10 minutes in T-Rex and let it stabilize for its values here in terms of temperature so that we can get a base reading of it and be sure of our um, overall performance. So I'll let it run for 10 minutes and see you guys after and in the meantime I will install the fan. Right guys, so as you can see we are after 12 minutes here and we are just about stabilized at 96C with peaks of 98. Uh, as you can see we are experiencing a peak right now. So this is just about as hot as this GPU was going to get by its own self using these settings over here. So let's get on cracking and jerry rigging the fan on the back of it. Okay guys, so we have been running T-Rex Miner now for about 28 minutes as you can see here. So this is including the previous session. Uh, the only thing that I did was to actually restart the hardware info over here with a new session because I wanted to get an actual reading of the maximum temperature using the uh, fan on the back there, uh, then without the fan on the back. So as you can see, we're, we're in a very good shape, uh, if you ask me. So we are at 90C right now. This is the operating temperature of the GPU using the same stock settings. I have not changed these settings. And we have lows of 88 and the high being of 90. Just before we were sitting at 96Cs with, um, 80, with, with 98, I should say, the maximum temperature. And right now, there is a delta between the lowest point, which is 88, and the highest point from before of 10 degrees C. Which is an actually impressive result, if you ask me, just by sticking a fan on the back of the GPU like we did here. But I guess these are the actual advantages of uh, actively cooling something than uh, to uh, rather just passively cooling something. So let's take this test further. Uh, I'm going to shut down the rig now, retake the GPU from the rig and put it on the bench here. And we are going to install the thermal pads with the uh, heat sinks and the fans and see exactly what the result we can come up with. Right guys, so this is what we are working with today. So this is the MSI RTX 3090, the Supreme X version. We have a bunch of fans here from Be Quiet, the 120 millimeter Pure Wings to 1500 RPM fans here. We have a um, fan controller so that I can attach these two fans to somewhere down there. There is an Intel board, a very old one. So beneath all that rat's nest, there is an Intel board that I need to connect this fan controller and then the fans for this GPU right here. And other than that, as you can see, we have some uh, aluminum heat sinks, as you can see here, nothing fancy. We'll keep it on the cheap side and some uh, thermal pad here. So this is, uh, what, 2.0 watts per meter Kelvin? Yeah, definitely nothing high end here, but we're trying to keep the whole build uh, down to the minimum. So uh, we'll see what results we can get. I'm pretty sure we can get some uh, very good results, even though we're using some uh, very, well, I would say inefficient thermal pads, but this is just as a medium to transfer the heat from the back plate of the GPU here using the heat sink so that we can input the, uh, well, I should say increase the thermal capacity or dissipation capacity of the board right here. So this aside, uh, doing this one handed, it's not very good, but let's get to it. Right, so the whole idea of this Supreme X here, um, I will show you a pop-up on the screen, but I can also take a video like this. Anyway, the idea is that as you can see on the back of this GPU right here, so on the back there are the memory chips themselves, 
So you have a bunch here, a bunch here, and another row over here, and a uh, single chip somewhere over here. And if you look closely in the opening there, you can see the remnants of a thermal pad right there, and you have a bunch of thermal pads right underneath this aluminum uh, heat sink over here. So if I focus there a bit, yeah, there you should be able to see it. And the same goes over here. So if you look underneath this metal lip, somewhere over there, I don't know how well we can uh, spot that in the video. And the same goes for this side over here. So you have the memory chips here. These are the memory chips that are on the back of the PCB. So they're not being actively cooled by the three fans on the front because the three fans on the front are connected with a heatsink directly to what memory chips lie beneath this, uh, this heatsink over here. But these are just being passively cooled by the three large fans on the front and the heatsink. So the whole idea of today's video is to actually take these, uh, well, little aluminum modules over here, stick them on here like that, and on here like that, and of course on the other side as well. Uh, of course, stick them on the back here with the thermal uh, pad that I have here, use it here, and thus we can increase the thermal capacity of this GPU. Of course, attach a fan to the whole rig and see exactly what temperatures we can come up with. So, as I have mentioned guys, uh, this is how the back of the GPU looks right here. So, as you can see, you have uh, eight uh, memory chips on both of the sides. So, there are four here, four here, and three of them here, and one of them being situated right here. Uh, you can, of course, just uh, double check this by looking underneath the lip of this metal backplate, and you will see the uh, thermal compound over there, or I should say the thermal pads. And uh, once we have done that and we have confirmed the location of where our thermal pad is going to go, then we are going to install our heat sinks over there. And uh, at the end of all things said and done, we are going to mount the fans on top of it and then we are going to put it on the test bench and see what results we come up with. So I guess it's time now for a montage. Okay guys, so as you can see we're just about ready to turn things back on. The GPU it's with its heat sinks attached. I'm just gonna, for the moment, for the first test, before I attach the fans blowing this way, I'm just gonna put it again uh, right up to the heat sinks over here. Uh, it is guarded by these four protections so there's not gonna be an, not gonna be an issue of uh, interacting with them. It's right up against them over there. I'm just gonna turn the board back on and uh, we'll see what happens, right? Okay guys, so as you can see we have opened up now T-Rex Miner over here running the same settings as before in uh, MSI Afterburner. Uh, I've opened up a, uh, a new session of Hardware Info of course. And we are going to run this GPU uh, for about 10 to 12 minutes, same as before, and see exactly what are the results. So do bear in mind that we are sitting at a steady 90 degrees before with lows of 88. And uh, in comparisons to running it uh, as stock as it was without any active cooling on the back, it was going as high as 98 and sitting at around 96C. So let's see if there is any improvement uh, that we can talk about after 12 minutes of running the GPU. So in the meantime guys, I can show you that we are actually running the fan right up against the installed heat sinks. Uh, as you can see, the heat sinks are just there and we are running the fan and blowing actively over them. So on the other side, as you can see, the fan are going 100% on this GPU right here. And uh, yeah, this being said, I'll get back to you guys in about 12 minutes of mining and see exactly how the temperatures look like. All right, guys, so as you can see, we have been running the miner here for about 12 minutes now, and we are sitting at a comfy 86 degrees C with a maximum of 88 degrees. 
which is actually fantastic if you ask me. So for an investment of around uh, 12 bucks or 10 bucks or so, depending on the fan that you uh, are getting, because these uh, Be Quiet fans are a bit expensive, but you can go with any other fan. It doesn't have to be a Pure Wings fan or anything from Be Quiet for that matter. Um, the idea is that running stock with the GPU as it was without any active cooling on the back, it was uh, seeing temperatures of 96C with highs of 98, running the fans on the front uh, full 100% blast. And right now with the fan and the heat sinks attached, we are seeing 86 degrees C steadily with peaks of 88 which is just about a fixed 10 degrees delta between what we was running before and what it is running at right now. And if you ask me for around 10 bucks of uh, just, uh, you know, jerry-rigging uh, an improvement on your GPU, on your very expensive GPU, I could say, this is a very good thing to do. Another scenario which I want to test right now is to actually reduce the fan speed of the fans on the GPU itself. So if you're just trying to preserve the life of those fans on the front there, uh, let's let's try and see how much we can uh, we can pull it back before we reach the temperatures that were previously running uh, stock without any sort of active cooling on the back. So let's uh, let's pull the dial back here. I'll start with around um, let's say 80 percent. So there we go now, 80 percent. Let's, let's let it run for about 10 minutes or so and, uh, and see exactly what temperatures we arrive at after 10 minutes and if it's anything uh, around the stock settings of what, was it, uh, what it was before, I'm really happy because this way we can actually save the life of the fans and as well reduce the overall noise levels of the uh, GPU. Alright guys, so I'm pretty surprised and I'm pretty impressed. Reducing the fan speed by 20%, it gave us a stable temperature of, uh, well, around 88 with highs of 90. So yeah, we're able to actually save those fans. This proves that uh, blowing fans on the front, uh, running them full high gear all the time, is not really so effective because the chips or a part of the chips are on the backside so they're not being actively cooled by the fans uh, heating or I should say cooling the heatsink from the front. So let's try and uh, pull them down even more, uh, let it run for about 10 more minutes and see if for instance I can run the fans at around 50% and uh, see what temperatures we arrive at because running them at 50% should give you around, uh, uh, you know, just uh, doubling the lifespan of those uh, fans. So uh, I would say this is quite an interesting uh, point to make. Right, so let's run it now for 50 at 50% 50 for about 10 minutes and uh, keep an eye on the temperatures and see if we come up to what was uh, running at uh, stock configuration uh, just before. All right, get back to you guys in about 10 minutes and see exactly where we stand. Okay guys, so it has been another 10 minutes here and as you can see running the fans at 50% speed we have uh, reached a stable 92% uh, sorry 92 degrees C. Uh, C and a high of 94 degrees Celsius, which is actually quite impressive. Uh, once again, this shows to prove how uh, efficient it is to actively cool something rather than passively. Right guys, so here we are at the end and I am very, very, very happy for these test results because this makes it well uh, worth it uh, to invest the 10 or so dollars in a fan and uh, some cheap aluminum heat sinks and some cheap thermal pads. I'm pretty sure that maybe you can get some better results if you invest more in some more uh, higher efficient thermal pads because the thermal pad that I'm having here it's uh, rated for 2 watts per meter Kelvin. So this is pretty much the cheapest of the cheapest of the cheapest bunch of thermal pad that I can find. But I was uh, just curious to see if on the cheap you are able to reduce the GPU uh, thermal performance. And uh, well actually to increase the thermal performance which you are able to do. And I'm quite happy about that. Now if you have any sort of modifications done to your GPU on your rigs I would kindly ask you to leave your thoughts and comments down in the box below. Because I'm very curious to see what sort of uh, results you have arrived at. And as well, maybe there are other people who are watching these videos and uh, as well, they're very curious to see what they can do about their mining operation and how overall to, inf to increase the thermal efficiency of the GPUs that they are running. This being said, guys, this was Alex from Tech Fusion. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you want to subscribe to our channel, we'll greatly appreciate it. So you can do that over here. Or if you want to continue watching another video from our channel, you can do so over here. But anyway, don't forget to leave a like and a comment down in the box below as it will greatly help us out and, uh, well, improve the community and help us out with the YouTube algorithm. Thank you guys once again for watching. Goodbye.